Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode. If you recall from a previous episode, if you saw it, I bought some estate jewelry. I ended up with that really expensive Pyrex dish, the uh, Atomic Burst. I um, feel like I'm not saying that right. Anyway, you know the one. <laughs> if you didn't see that video, go back and watch it. But the, the big thing that came out of that episode for me is I was introduced to this family whose uh, parent used to be a professional hockey player from the 50s right up through the 70s. And uh, we ended up with one trophy and they said, come on back, um, see if there's anything else that you want. And we ended up striking a deal for a whole bunch of boxes of stuff that came out of the same estate. So we're gonna go through that today. I'm hoping there's gonna be some good finds in here. Um, the fellow had a, a long career in the NHL and you never know, even like little gifts and stuff could be worthwhile. So let's dig through some boxes and look for some hopefully uh, important NHL artifacts. Let's go. Now I should say that I believe most of the hockey stuff is kind of in this area here. Um, probably a couple little things in here too, but uh, I want to get these boxes sorted first because they kind of just threw the stuff in um, and anything that can just be sold at, at auction before I find a proper home for the NHL stuff I should find. Uh, I do see these look like, yeah, all-star team calendars, Bobby Orr, Phil Esposito, Maple Leaf Gardens, January 1975. So it's an old Export A cigarette calendar, hockey calendar. That's pretty cool. And it looks like there's probably a couple of those in here. I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna find all sorts of hockey stuff, but we've got coins of the world. There's a couple of these have been displaced a little bit. We'll find out where those go. But uh, some world coins. Massive old dictionary probably dating to like the 1930s or 40s but latest authentic edition that is a, that is if you have a dictionary at home and it's not this big think of all the extra words that you are missing um they add and drop words out of the dictionary pretty often um as they uh, are no longer used in our colloquial languages um Oh, geez, I should write them and see if somebody's missing their glasses. I don't know if those are supposed to be in there or not. It's an old family Bible. That definitely looks like it's been traveled and has some age to it. I should take the elastic off and see what year this is from. Uh, my guess, I'm going to guess 1898, something like that on this. Let's see if it does have a publication date. Oh, look how close I am. 1893. Just because I've, I've had them like this. Is this a German Bible? This is Ingborg Lund. Lundy. And uh, so this was a family Bible, I guess. Uh, the hockey player's name was Len Lundy. Pretty neat. And uh, yes, the, the family did make sure that this is all stuff they didn't want. This is like a little um, Coke tin, but it looks like a little cooler. That's cute, isn't it? And a, let's see, Norway, Denmark, and Sweden? Sverige, Sverige. So sort of a Scandinavian inspired table lighter. Looks like it needs a little bit of TLC. It's not popping open like it should. There, it's a little better now. Flint is no good, but kind of a cool decorative tabletop piece. So some stuff in this box that can certainly go, except for the glasses, that might belong to somebody who needs them. So I'll, I'll write them and find out, see if they're missing their glasses. A little variety box here is McDonald's toy. Not terribly old because it has a uh, website on it. A little brownie fiesta. And it's in the box. 1960s era. 
lots of people like these little brownie cameras. They're kind of fun and their boxes are cool. So that can be sold. Shoe sizer. Um, some vintage skates, but these aren't men's skates. That, uh, she said that her mom used to be a speed skater and those are vintage ladies speed skate skates. Is that how you'd say it? Speed skater skates? Anyway, look how long the blade is on these things. Right from the 50s or so. Uh, let's see, what else do we have in here? Another little, another little lighter. Well, actually, not so little. That's also a cigarette case, too. Tiny little boat. Oh, it has the uh, Norwegian Viking made in Norway. Well, that's kind of neat. Norwegian made decorative boat. And some flags. What's in the box? There's a little box and inside of it is some jewelry. Some brooches made in France. That's uh, like Bakelite. And is this a cat looking in a mirror? Yes, it is. And you can see the cat in the mirror. That's a funny little brooch. Can you guys see that? Maybe I can... I don't know if I can focus on it, but there's a cat looking at itself in a mirror. Okay, some brooches. Santana. Evil ways. Let's see, Trini Lopez, Tom Jones, the fever zone with Delilah on it. How to do the twist instructional album. Big band percussion. Charlie Daniels, Olivia Newton John. So, some various records in here. Tony Bennett. All right. So, generic sort of estate stuff here. We empty out a few more of these boxes, and we've got some, you know, estate sort of costume jewelry. I should make sure it's not a, uh, a good brand name. You never can tell. It could be Sherman or something. Um, also, this. Uh, this, if you don't recognize the person on the side of this package, that's Twiggy. And this case, I believe, would have originally had a Twiggy wig. For the young, you know, they made beetle wigs that guys could make themselves look like the Beatles. And while well, this case, they had Twiggy wigs. Um, but what we have in here looks like some doll clothes. And we have a little disco kind of doll, Sweet Times by the Rock Flowers Group. So uh, it's a little disco gal, and she goes in the middle of your record player on that little insert that you'd have on your uh, records, and she will spin around with her hands up and dance to the music, I guess, was the idea. So we've got a few little accessories there. Um, yeah, kind of a neat little variety. Uh, you know, record player doll is kind of a cool piece. Maybe her sunglasses might be in there somewhere. Looks like she had fancy boots at one point. So that's kind of neat. Um, you might have seen me walk past this a few times. It's actually a Hudson's Bay jacket. Circa 50s, somewhere in there. But the thing that's cool about this it's brand new. So they bought it and never used it. And they got it on sale. $145 at that time was incredibly expensive. And they got it on sale for $97.15. And the tag is still on it. Never, ever worn. I've never had a brand new. Now, it was sitting in a closet, so it's got a little uh, dust on it. I'll have to get this dry cleaned. But that's phenomenal that it's an unworn original Hudson's Bay jacket. Probably worth about $300 or so just on its own. And, of course, there is a Chrissy doll there as well by Ideal Toys. And the thing with the Chrissy doll was, uh, well, she had opening and closing eyes, but her hair could grow. You could pull her hair, make it longer, shorter, whatever. Um, so she had different lengths of hair. Hair that grows and grows and grows and grows. So basically, it's a doll completely stuffed with hair so that you could do uh, a whole bunch of haircuts on her and not worry about uh, damaging the toy that much. So that's cool that it's got the original box too. In this box, we have some 1960s Barbies. And I think that's a Millie or a Midge or whatever she was called, one of Barbie's friends or one of her pals. Um, there's a Barbie head in there. 
and the body, oh, and the head, for a talking Ken. Let's forget the fact that Ken appears to be wearing bottomless leather trousers. <laughs> How was your weekend, Ken? <laughs> don't pull that string, you don't wanna hear the answer. Um, actually, does he work? Well, his head came off again. No, his little record player in here is not working, but that is a fairly unique piece. Oh, and his leg. Oh, Ken, you've seen better days. His leg has come off, so that's more or less just a heart stall, unfortunately. But somebody might need, you know, just the head or what have you from something like that. Kind of neat. Um, well, with that, uh, on that note, I think it's time to finally start looking through what we have for the hockey gear here. A couple interesting pieces here. We have this uh, Salmi, which means Finland. Even the Finnish people don't call themselves Finnish or from Finland. It's Salmi over there, but that's a... Uh, championship jersey with uh, Len Lundy's number on it, 25. And here we have the Salmon Yakamos Metros. Anyway, I think what that means is the Finnish Ice Hockey Championship gold medal with the winning team there. So this is a presentation piece. You've got the pins, 1971. Uh, 1972, this silver sort of medallion has Len Lundy's name on it. For the Ilves hockey team and this is Finland it looks like the uh the Olympic rings right there but that is a gold medal um that's a pretty cool piece you know and to get it right from the house like that and of course this nice vintage you know probably I, I think he was with the uh, the Finnish team in the early 70s and that that's a very nice hockey sweater very nice early piece and there's not just one there's you know you're home you're away and then a few other jerseys as well and coats from when he became a, uh, uh, a scout. Gothborg. And team jackets. That's also uh, Finland. The Ilves Hockey League. That's their patch. So that's an official team jacket. So it looks at one time like, so we have the Ilves hockey sweaters, but also this other sweater, which has the Kess Oil branding on it, Kess Oil being a big petroleum company, gas station in uh, Finland, must have sponsored the team at some point. Let's see, Len Lundy Hockey School. So he had his own hockey school. Yeah, his own Len Lundy Hockey School sweater. And I did see he also played in the Old Timers Association too. So a couple of his own hockey school sweaters. Len Lundy Hockey School. Once you're a player, there's a few of these. And you wanna teach kids what to do? Let's see, Sport O'Keefe, Alberta softball champions, 1975. Yes, I guess he also played baseball too. So we've got some baseball jackets. That just looks like a regular sort of golf jacket. This is from Lee Gardens. It's all these old sort of sponsored coats. That's pretty cool. This looks like it's uh, shell colors almost. Alphys Radio, OCH TV, Hedemora. Sport Ua, St. Skedvi. Sport Ua. And what's this last one in here? Adidas, old school Adidas, and it has the ICA patch on the arm. And the Joe und Göteborg. Cool, nice little variety of vintage jackets in here. Um, this bag I noticed, we know we've got his, a couple of his helmets. In outstanding condition. This would have been a presentation sort of cup, I'm sure. It's just not signed or anything like that. And it looks like, uh, he said that, um, well, the, the kid said that he scouted Yari Curry and some of these other players when they were um, scouting overseas. And so this was to honor Yari Curry. 
and it uh, looks like they had Air Canada Club seating. So they were in sort of a special seating area. And we've got some signed pucks. And a very early, some early Edmonton Oilers pucks in here. That's when it was still WHA uh, with the name Gary L. Davidson on it. Made in Canada. And he was actually part of the Oilers back when it was part of the WHA. And there's one of his helmets right there. Ah, okay. Brought the bin in to look through it in here. There's Len right there. And he was on the Buckaroos. Playing under number 14. So some promotional pictures. There's his card. Is this? I don't know if that's his rookie card. Fifty-seven, fifty-eight, Detroit Red Wing, Red Wings center. Nineteen sixty, sixty-one Stanley Cup finalist photo. That's pretty cool. I mean, a lot of this sort of stuff, you know, you had to be on the team to get, and you certainly had to be a player. This is an actual trophy. It's really dusty. But what was it for? The 1965, 64-65 K of C Pro Athlete of the Year, Len Lundy. Knights of Columbus, K of C? Hmm. Not K F C, K of C. <laughs> There's a difference. But he won Athlete of the Year, got a trophy for that. Needs to be tightened up a little bit and cleaned up. It's cool. Yeah, Moskva, 1973. Svenska Ishockey. The men's Swedish hockey team plaque. Okay, got some more Red Wings stuff. It looks like a uh, jersey patch or a jacket patch. It's chain stitched, old school, early 60s. And a couple felt patches, or a felt patch and a sticker. Oh, it's like a window decal water transfer. Oh, the SO Power Play, NHL Power Play album. And let's see. Yep. You go to the gas station, you get this book. And you'd have to find all your stickers for all the teams. And this looks like it's actually complete. Every team, they got the Sabres, Boston Bruins, there's Bobby Orr right there. Yeah, it looks like somebody went to the effort to collect each and every sticker. I guess if you're the kid of a professional hockey player, you're probably gonna work hard to complete your sets. But yeah, that's a nice, actually it's in decent condition. It's hardcover too. A lot of the ones I've seen were uh, soft cover. Oh, that's kind of neat from the collectible side of things. But what I'm looking for in here is more like the personalized items. I see a little trophy down there. We'll get to that. Individual uh, Canadian Old Timers Hockey Association. 1976. Of course, a lot of uh, professional players continue playing hockey. It's more of a recreational level. Western Junior Hockey League All-Star Team. Um, this was the, I hope I can find the plaque for it. This was actually from the uh, uh, Edmonton team, from the Edmonton Flyers, 1955-56. So you got Doug Barkley, defense, right wing, Harold Ottenbright, center, Len Lundy. That's our, our Len Lundy, whose stuff we're going through. Coach Murray Armstrong, left wing Bill Voss, out Erickson defense and George Wood in goal. That's pretty neat. That's going back a few years. And it looks like, yeah, there was a little, another little plaque at the very top there that probably had the team name on it. But that's cool. The Western Junior Hockey League All-Star team. And the, uh, at the time, the Edmonton Flyers were the home team, the farm team for the Detroit Red Wings. So that makes sense that he went from the minor league team, the Western team, as an Edmonton Flyer and made his way to the Red Wings as a rookie when he got called up to the big leagues. 
And what do we have here? Presented this little clock. It's missing one screw there. It's a little hockey trophy and it says, Len Lundy, Red Wing Rookie of the Year, presented by the Detroit Sports Broadcasters Association. Well, isn't that cool? An official little Red Wings trophy. That's pretty neat. Oh, there's the old timers patch. <laughs> they gave himself like he's got like a beard and a hockey stick and a crutch. And he's gone gray and balding, but he's still on his skates. So I guess we'll keep that with the old timer stuff. Try and keep this somewhat organized in here. And there's all these banners, Japan National Ice Hockey Federation, 73-74. Mistrotska Sviata Polska Finlandia. So this was Pol Poland versus Finland, 1975. Russia and Finland, Germany. So I know he was with the Finnish team for quite some time. But then you've got, what is this? It's, it looks like Olympic. What does it say? Oh, Centennial 1975 Calgary. I don't know if that's what was in there. Senior A Men's All-Star 1975. I don't think that's what was originally in this because that looked like it had uh, some sort of Olympic affiliation, but that's still kind of cool. And more presentation pieces. They sure like to give people clocks and barometers back then. There's another big, look, this is a wall clock. But look, Detroit Red Wings, L. Lund, 58-59. It's a German made clock, Montrose. Needs a good cleaning. But that's actual early Detroit Red Wings stuff. And that is pretty nifty. It's pretty cool. It looks like it's uh, battery operated, or was. You flip it up like this to get to the mechanism, but probably not worth much as a clock, but you add that on there. And that adds a whole bunch of uh, extra interest to a piece like that. What do we have in here? Official Art Ross American League Hockey Puck, the, the Tire Rubber Company. Well, that's got to be it. 1956, I think it says on it. That's an early official puck. Put that with the puck collection. And there's another one here, too. Looks like 72 CCCP. It's got the sickle. So is that the Russian, the famous Olympic Canada versus Russia game? Could it be? I mean, oh, what is this? One, one of Finland's champions, 1972, Ilves Tampere. And there's the Ilves logo. They're crest on this little flag, so I guess that's what it is. It's a little presentation piece. Lots of good uh, presentation stuff. Oh, there's this little, that matches the jersey we had made in Finland. Little hockey dude. <laughs> the Salmi uh, official team. And there we go. For Lunda. Go to board. We saw some of that stuff in the garage. Mats Lind, Thomas Anderson. I'm just reading some of the names off of here. Some of these folks would have made it to uh, the NHL after playing in the uh, European League. Oh, I, I've seen these before. This is, I think, is this the Swedish or the Finnish team? Anyway, from what I understand, this little silver, this little chunk of silver here, what does it say on it? Spanky. Oh. Usu, usu Spanky. That they would give this to their um, 
the team they were playing, and then uh, they would the other team would put it under the ice. Sort of like a goodwill gesture between a, a major game. And it says uh, 1970-72, it's the Ilves HJK. And there's a whole bunch of these in there. It's just a pile of them. Look. There's another one. And I wonder if they're all engraved for different years. Yeah, they are. 72, 74, so for different games. Isn't that something? Well, we'll set all this stuff aside up top here. Get those up and out of the way. Those are pretty special. Pretty neat pieces. You can see in the gold, it's very light. 72 Ilves and IFK. It's at a very specific spot. There it goes. How it goes together. 1973. That's a metal. Oh, look at that. Big hockey glove. I'll have to look up and see what the CCCP stands for in terms of hockey. I know there's European leagues that are a little somewhat different than what we have here. That is a pretty interesting little piece though. You know, we've got gold medals and stuff. I mean, things that I just uh, really don't come across every day and that's the stuff that makes me excited. And of course, I'm sure many of you at home will uh, be screaming at the screen saying, CCCP, that means USSR, and yes, it does. Um, so that is a Russian um, medal, basically, from the 73 game. So any, any of these CCCP pieces that we find are from the, that sort of uh, golden Soviet era of hockey that was so very competitive. One thing I was kind of excited to go through was this. Now, I know it doesn't look like much. It's like your typical 1960s little men's accessory box. But when you've played in the NHL, your accessories might be a little bit more interesting than most. So we've got a hockey skate tie clip. And what I'm hoping for is that amongst all this stuff that maybe, just maybe, we'll find some branded little buttons, tie clips, or things that came from the NHL. You know, like a special sort of gift they would have given their... Uh, your players, oh, that's gold, I think. It says 10K. All right, well, there's gold in here. <laughs> you know, it's other sorts of gold I'm looking for. I'm looking for historic gold, not necessarily, oops, not necessarily uh, actual gold, but it doesn't hurt when you come across it. So there's another, oh, CCM. So that's probably a promotional piece from CCM that they gave out to players. A little CCM tie clip. That's cool. I mean, obviously there's a Detroit Red Wings pocket knife right here. It's that kind of stuff is what I'm looking for in here. Okay, well, there's matching cufflinks. Always some little coins. Uh, it looks like it has a logo on it, actually. Nope. It's a coin. I thought it said GWG. Oh, that's from the hockey team. And we have, yep, that's the same logo. So there's hockey cuffling from Finland. And we have, when he played with the Portland Buckaroos way back when. So Portland Buckaroos, ERS, what's this? One dollar FRS. Blackhawks, Chicago Blackhawks. Nice old official Blackhawks. There's the other Portland Buckaroos. There's a little Portland Buckaroos tie clip or vest clip. There's the other Blackhawks cuffling. Blackhawks tie clip, so that's a full set. And look at this. There's the enamel Blackhawks cuffling. This is sort of stuff that you probably would have only got if you were a player or upper management, and that's so cool. Yeah, that's just sort of a generic golfing money clip. Uh, let's see. Forlunde, yep. More clips. 
This is all hockey related. There's a little medal. What's that for? Len Lund. Well, there is a little hockey medal there. That looks like it's... Well, there's no helmet on that player, so that's old. That's 50s or early 60s. I wonder what the story with that was. Bottle cap. What's this? It is the Carl Skrona 1970 Hockey Club. This is so neat to go through this stuff. I mean, I was saying, like, really, you don't have a chance. I'll have to look that up and see. That might be something. This isn't your average stuff. It's definitely, you know, this sort of stuff ends up in collections or museums and uh, not the sort of thing that you see out in the wild too often. Well, I should separate these cufflings out either way. Um, said part of my goal today is to try and find stuff I can just run through auction and clean out. Uh, and then the, the more special stuff that was probably promotional or given to him as a hockey player, that will, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, to be honest. Still figuring that out. At the very bottom of the bin were a whole bunch of these great 1950s player pictures that they would have sent out. Probably press release type photos. So that's him playing for Buffalo. There he is. And that one, I don't know if that's a facsimile signature, but that's him wearing his uh, jersey when he was playing overseas. But the nice thing is all of this will tie together with the jerseys and all the other bits that we have. I think we have that jacket out in the garage, in fact. I think that same exact jacket. Look at this, just such great historic photographs and pictures here. Yeah, this 1972 it's dated. And then he's holding what looks like the metal. Oh, actually, you know what metal that is? That's that metal right there. He's holding that in his hand in this picture. And that's dated 1972. Okay, keep that together. Detroit Red Wings Stanley Cup finalists. Gordie Howe right there, right up front. These are some great early press photos. Like they're drinking 7-Up. I've seen right after a big game. Would love to have found one of those original Detroit Red Wing uh, jerseys, but they are hanging on to that. That's original. Red Wings. That's a... Somebody just took a scan. But it says on the back what it is. Len Lundy and Parker McDonald, 1960. There he is playing drums <laughs> with the Red Wings crest on his drum kit. So obviously he liked to play drum, drums as well. And there's his official photo for the Red Wings, probably one they would use later for hockey cards or whatever else. It's a great shot. Red Wing Magazine, 62-63. Is he in here? Let's see, Norm Allman was playing. Terry Sawchuk. Gordy Howe. Alex Del Vecchio. And Sid Abel. He was on the team at this time, but I guess he wasn't uh, part of the main roster at that point. I know he played the 60 61 season. Oh, look, there's a picture of Gordy Howe right in the front of it. Cool. I'm just kind of uh, taking my time going through this right now and kind of just walking you guys through as I'm trying to, I'm looking right now. Oh, there he is, Len Lundy. So there's Len and there's Gordy Howe. Play together on the ice the same time. From Edmonton, Alberta, they say. And then a bunch of press pictures. There's another Gordy Howe. Is this original? Yeah. From Michigan. These are original Red Wings press pictures. In fact, um, sometimes they would send them in an envelope, which looks like that's what this is right here. Yep. There it is sent to him when he lived in Edmonton. 1961. Detroit Hockey Club, Detroit, Michigan. Photographs. Please do not bend. So there's the original Red Wings photo photograph album. Oh, look, they, they got him his own personalized letterhead for the Blackhawks. 
Like all this stuff is so cool. It's just heck, what do you, what the heck do you do with it? Sports hockey, Lynn Lundy, 1963. It's stamped a whole bunch of times. That must be his like um, pass photo. 1966 on the Blackhawks. Top row. Bobby Hall, Dennis Hall, Chico Mackey, Len Lundy. Yep, he's there with them. Phil Esposito, he's right in the same row with Phil Esposito. Oh, what a great team. And these were all great teams. There's another postcard with his name on it from the Blackhawks. 62-63 Blackhawks season. Played with Glenn Hall. Gosh, the stories I'm sure he could have told. Oh, there's... He signed that one. I got one thing with the signature on it. And actually, is this team signed? Rochester Americans Hockey Club, 1968. I wonder who was on that team. That looks like actually uh, facsimile signatures, but still kind of a cool thing. Oh, there's another one of his hockey cards in the mix. Vancouver Canucks. Portland Buckaroos. That'll go with the Buckaroos cufflings. Just so neat. All of this uh, great hockey history that you really don't see. Northern Alberta Dairy Pool in the spotlight. Len Lundy. There he is when he was just a kid here in my hometown. The dashing Lundy is presently pacing the Flyers in the scoring race. So that's Edmonton Flyers related. We got another picture here. Winnipeg versus the Flyers. 1957. Looks like he had that taped up on the wall for a while there. There's your Edmonton Flyers promotional stuff. And people really like the Flyers jersey because it has that cool sort of jet airplane on it. And here we go, a nice team photo, original team picture. Not dated, but that's the earlier jersey. That would be like the 55 or 6 sort of season right there. And that's what we have the trophy for. So everything really just tying together here with all this great history, you know, a good portion of a man's professional hockey career and a lot of collectors from a lot of different areas would probably think this is just a fascinating collection. Well, this has been a fun collection to go through. Now begins a sorting process where we get all this, basically I'm gonna separate it out into its groupings, like the, all the Red Wing stuff, uh, all the Blackhawk stuff, the early 50s items, try and separate stuff out as best I can. But what a collection. And thank you so much to the family for entrusting me with these great items of their dads to try and uh, find new homes for it. So uh, the work just begins for me um, as of today. And uh, But what a fun collection. What a fun bin of stuff to go through. If you like these sort of videos, you should subscribe to this channel because I do this stuff all the time. I want to find NHL stuff all the time, but I do find cool stuff all the time. Uh, so subscribe, like the video, and guys, as always, bye for now. Bye, everybody.